Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is Dr. Garayas, Bio 111. This is Laboratory Unit 3 and Incredible Life of Muscles and Nerves. So the first thing it asks us is to isolate the muscular system and uh, to start labeling and uh, looking at some muscles. So let's do that thing first. So of course, open up our menu, we go to cadavers, and I believe it was male full body Caucasian. Okay, we have chosen uh, the male Asian cadaver and uh, this is what comes up. And of course, we hit our um, uh, visualization button and we have this button here and give it a second clears everything out, and this time, instead of skeletal, we're gonna focus on muscular. Okay. Pulls out. Okay, so let's look at the superficial muscles and anterior view from head to toe. So let's look at some of these muscles here. Now, remember the bones of the skull? Well, uh, the muscles kind of match it as well. So of course, you have your frontal bone, so you have this muscle right here, which is your occipital frontalis. So it's a muscle that stretches from the posterior portion of the skull, where the occipital is, to the frontal part. You have round muscles here in the face. You have two orbicularis oris muscles. Orb means circle. You have a round muscle here around your mouth orbicularis oris. Let's look at the side. You have a main muscle right here for chewing, and that's your masseter. If I have a temporal bone, I also have a, let's see if I can find, get a good, here you go. I have my temporalis muscle. So you have occipital frontalis in the top and temporalis, all right. <laughs> Here's another popular muscle that helps you turn your neck. This is your sternocleidomastoid. And you can see from the name, it connects to your sternum in the front. Um, uh, mastoid process of your skull in the back here and your clavicle. It's in there somewhere. That's your sternocleidomastoid. You have this flat muscle here in the front that's your platysma, your big chest muscle, which is your pectoralis major. Okay. And if you have a major muscle, that means it's big. So if I dissect that thing out, there's gonna be a pectoralis minor, so that's a smaller muscle. This is, <coughs> this is the major muscle. There are some muscles that look like a shape, and here's one of them. It looks like kind of like a rounded out triangle. That's your deltoid. You have two sets of muscles here in the anterior portion of your arm, or your brachium, and that's your biceps brachii. Brachii means uh, your upper arm or your brachium. Biceps, that means there are two muscles. And then the one posterior located, if that's your biceps, then this has to be your triceps. Now, sep means head, so the biceps has two parts or two heads, and the triceps has three. Biceps is located anterior, and the triceps are located posteriorly. You have some superficial muscles here in uh, your abdominal wall. Uh, the one here I love to call riblets, but they look like uh, a serrated knife or a bunch of knives or a bread knife. That's your serratus anterior because it's serrated like a knife or a saw blade, and it's located in the front. You have these muscles here that run diagonally or oblique. Let's take out the color and you can see them. See how it runs diagonally and that's called an oblique. You have some uh, uh, muscles in your forearm, extensor muscles, but a nice one here is your brachioradialis. Remember in lecture, you talked about synergist versus antagonist. Well, <clears throat> if your bicep is doing work, the tricep is the antagonist, the bicep is the agonist or primary mover, and the synergist, the thing that helps 
the bicep, that is your brachial radialis, and it's connected to your brachium, which is your upper arm, and to your radial bone of your, uh, your, your radial bone, your radius. And you will notice on one side of the forearm, there'll be a whole bunch of flexor muscles. And on the posterior side, there'll be a whole bunch of extensor muscles. Kindly look back at your lecture to know why. Because remember, all muscles, all they ever do is contract or get smaller. Another thing we could do to look at a little bit more superficial, I mean, a little bit deeper muscles of your abdomen is use the uh, explore tool, what I like to call the invisible lady tool. I click on that, I click on this, and then I could get rid of certain layers. So I got rid of this layer, right? I got rid of the external obliques. Then I get rid of this layer. And guess what I guess what I uncover here? I uncover a bunch of straight muscles, and this is your six pack or eight pack, depending on how fit or how much fat you have. And if you have under 5%, uh, you should have those serratus muscles here, and you have your six to eight pack, which is your um, rectus, um, not rectus, your, uh, your uh, let us now down, move down to the legs and some muscles of, uh, of, of, of note in your legs. Your quadriceps, which are the set of four muscles in your legs are embedded here in your thigh. And the best way to look at your thigh, which is probably the hardest part of the muscles to try to remember, is you gotta look for a landmark. And if you notice, do you see there's this big diagonal muscle here in the middle? And if I check on what that is, that's your sartorius. Do you see how it like kind of loops around? And to me, it looks like kind of like an S. And I use that as a landmark. And so I find a sartorius, and then if I'm on the right leg, I'm thinking of everything that's lateral, which is to the side, and then everything that's medial, which is in the middle. So let's look at the medial structures. So coming from the middle of the sartorius on down to the medial structures, I have a muscle in here that's psoas, right? Not so important, but this one's a little bit more important. Pectineus and your adductor longus, right? These two muscles, nice to know, but what you need to know is that adductor longus. Now, what do adductors do? Imagine if this muscle right here is getting shorter, then it's going to do what? It's going to pull the leg closer to midline, which is adduction. And it's a long muscle, therefore it's known the adductor longus. The one most medially is the gracilis. The way I remember it is, oh, that's the thing that the ballet dancers use to be graceful. Okay, so to review from your landmark, which is your sartorius, which is here. You have your pectineus muscles and uh, you have your um, psoas and your pectineus, nice to know. But what's better to know, what you need to know, adductor longus, and definitely you're gonna hit your gracilis. So those are the medial muscles in your thigh. Anterior view, let's look at the lateral muscles. And I, because um, my student from a couple terms ago, um, she got this one down and I thought it was very interesting and makes me remember. She said it was a sandwich. So you could see here these two things and thing in the middle and then a thing on the side and then she said that was a drink uh, from Starbucks. And at first I was like, what the hell are you talking about? And let's look at it. So this muscle here from the medial, that's your vastus medialis. Vastus means what? It's vast, it's big, and it's located where? Right next to your sartorius, right? And it's medial. And if I have a vastus medialis, I have to have a what? Vastus lateralis. So that's like two pieces of bread on a rectus sandwich. And this is my thigh or my femoral muscle, so that has to be the rectus femoris. Now that's the sandwich. The vastus were the bread, the rectus is, this, is the meat, and then what's the drink? If you look at here, that is your tensor fasciae latte. And uh, my student was like, oh, that's the drink. That's my Starbucks. Get it? Latte, tensor fasciae, right? So tensor fasciae latte, you have your uh, vastus lateralis, vastus medialis, and of course the one here is your rectus femoris. And of course this is all 
lateral to your sartorius, which is uh, the thing at midline. So take a few moments because this is the harder part of uh, the whole identification of the superficial muscles. Now, what are the muscles up here? If you have a tibia, uh, tibial bone, you gotta have a what? Tibialis anterior. Then right next to it, it's gotta be the tibialis posterior, or not really right next to it, kind of behind it. That makes sense. So those are all the superficial, superficial muscles in the anterior part. So let's now go to the posterior. So I hit my button here, and now in the back. Let's look at some of these muscles here. This is another shape muscle. This is your trapezius or your traps. This is what gives, you know, football players when they got no neck. And it looks like a trapezoid, which is another shape. Uh, you also have your uh, infraspinatus, right? Nice to know. Terrace major, nice to know. But what's better? What's a more important muscle? Definitely your deltoid from the posterior view. And we're also looking at the posterior view of your triceps brachii. You can look at it here on the closer side, your biceps and your triceps brachii here. Right next to your triceps brachii, you have these huge muscles here called your lats or your latissimus dorsi. This is what gives bodybuilders and football players wings. You know, when they got like little thin waist and it spreads out. Of course, this is the one we all know and love, the, the gluteus maximus. And if we look deeper inside, there are other gluteus mu muscles, medius, and then the mid minimus is inside. So maximus, think what? Big, large. Now, let's go now, take a moment to start looking at the muscles of the thigh, but from the posterior view. You no longer have, um, um, uh, what do you call that? Uh, the landmark of the sartorius, but what do we know? The most medial muscle, oops, let's turn it around a little bit. The most medial muscle that we already know of is the gracilis. So that's one border. And of course, your tensor fasciae, look, that's the iliotibial band here. Right? And then you have also part of uh, the uh, vastus lateralis here. The iliotibial band connects into your tensor fasciae latte over here, posteriorly. But what's more important? This one, vastus lateralis. This one, right next to it, biceps femoris. And this one right here, that's your semitendinosus. And right next to your semitendinosus, you should have a semimembranosus. And then, of course, the adductor longus and the gracilis here on the sides. Oh, I'm sorry, not the longus, but the magnus. It's the big adductor muscle, and it's more to the rear. So, <coughs> so this video doesn't do it justice. Come in, uh, practice and check this stuff out, and take a good look at it in your anatomy textbook, or, you know, um, uh, find it online. The, the thigh is the, is the problematic uh, part, both anterior and posterior, of uh, anatomy uh, dissection and identification. Last but not least, that big muscle, uh, you know, uh, in the, the back of your lower leg, that's your gastrocnemius. We call it gastro because it's um, stomach or belly. It's got a big belly. Um, that's what they call uh, muscle heads. They call them bellies. So it's called the gastrocnemius, and that's the um, big muscle in the lower leg in the back. All right, that concludes um, the, uh, um, the superficial muscles uh, portion of this Unit 3 laboratory. Now, we're back here, and the next part is to look at uh, some of uh, the parts of the brain. Uh, if you look at items, um, it says high regional, uh, high res regional anatomy. So you could look at the cadaver. Also, you could look at the prosection. So we definitely need to know your lobes, right? And of course, for class, what they mean. So we could do a mid sagittal cut 
and uh, let's look at what a mid-sagittal cut can bring us. So of course I go to this and I'm going to do mid-sagittal. Of course I'm going to turn my patient on the side here. I'm going to use, and remember when I turn, I turn with only one finger and when I move around, I move with two fingers. If I want to make it larger, to the exact opposite of pinching, and if I want to make it smaller, pinch. So let's make it a little bit bigger. And then let's bring it down, my two fingers, and then let's look at this brain. And let's look at some of the parts that we could see from this view. Of course, in the front part of the brain, it's got to be the frontal lobe. You have the two pairs, Oh, this is the back part, occipital lobe. But what's the one that's really standing out on this particular uh, section? This white thing here. The white stuff is your corpus callosum. It is the connection between the left and right hemispheres of your brain. Um, and you remember in lecture that, you know, um, you can't just be 100% artistic or 100% mathematical or logical. There has to be a little bit of both. Um, those of you who are artists know that, you know, there's a, you know, in perspective, there's got to be a little bit mathematics in play. And those of you who have taken advanced math, um, especially calculus two onwards, it's almost art. It's almost, you know, uh, a feel to, um, to uh, mathematics. So nothing in this world is completely purely logical or purely artistic. It's a little bit of both, and the corpus callosum makes sure that the both hemispheres, right and left, get connected. Let's look at this thing right here. That circular thing, that's the thalamus, right? And uh, look at the functions of that, but here this is pure identification. Anterior commissure, cingulate gyrus, which is like above. You know what, there's, there's a better picture. <laughs> But these are, oh, and of course the cerebellum. That's the arbor vitae. So this view is, there's a potential for stuff, of course, frontal, and then the parietal back here, occipital all the way in the back. And there's some items here. Let's look at prosection of the brain and see if we can get something, uh, something else going here. So of course here, we pick, right, for the brain, I want a specific part, that's prosection. Pick on that. And then let's look for a brain. Let's look for a mid sagittal cut because that's okay. So this is our brain and let's, okay. Or maybe better, look, no, let's look at, let's look at this, this closer. So let's look at some of the parts and it's gonna label it for us. So of course, the front part, that's your frontal lobe. The one on the top, parietal lobe. The one in the back, occipital lobe. We already know the corpus callosum, right? The connection with the right and left hemispheres. And above that is the cingulate gyrus in green, in lovely 80s green. And the function of the cingulate gyrus is, uh, remember the limbic system? The limbic system is important because that is, um, uh, deals with your emotions, right? Okay, let's see what other parts that are available here. Let's just start pressing stuff and see what they bring us. All right, this thing here is your thalamus. Okay, and uh, remember that it controls a whole bunch of things. I'm not gonna get into it now, but we're all about the anatomy here. This thing is the hypothalamus. Hypo means right under. So if this is your thalamus, this has to be the hypothalamus. Uh, cerebral artery, not too important. Optic nerve. I'm just pressing on stuff to see what's next. Midbrain. And here's your pons. All right. And of course, they removed the cerebellum, which is here. All right. Let me see what other items that we had here. Now, um, another thing we could do. Let's remove all of this. Another thing that you'll also notice, let's look at the other side. Remember, prosection is a 3D section of your brain. Why am I doing it the hard way? 
if we look at this, and it's a little bit upside down, so let's go do this. And you can see here, the lobes also elucidate themselves here as well. This is the back part of the brain, and this is the front part of the brain. So just to give you perspective, back part, and this is the front part, this is the frontal. Now, do you notice that there are like fissures or cracks, right? Those cracks are called um, sulcus. A sulcus is singular, sulci is plural, S-U-L-C-U-S, -U -U singular, S-U-L-C-I or sulci, plural. Then you have this stuff here, you have the lumps, right? So you have a fissure, right? Those cracks, and then you have these bumps. Those pumps are called, one bump is called the gyrus, and that's G-Y-R-U-S, and then the plural is gyri, G-Y-R-I. And uh, we're not going to go into the specific ones, but if ever you're going to take a neuroanatomy class, hey, look, looks like uh, an Italian flag. Again, for perspective, frontal, occipital, here's the parietal, and you could see how they're, um, let me see if it'll take out the annotations now. Let's take, the, let's take the colors out. Wow. Do you see how the frontal, like there's, there's, there's lines or there's fissures or there's gyri uh, demarcating it. And you have the biggest one, your biggest uh, sulcus is your mid sagittal right here that separates the two parts of the brain. Let's look at, let's see if we can look at um, a prosection of a whole brain and we could see some of those as well. So you can see here, this is the whole brain and you can see there's a covering and that covering is of course the meninges but you can see arachnoid mater. Remember the three uh, uh, mater or mothers that are protecting my brain? It is your pia, which is the most delicate on the inside, arachnoid. And of course, the hardest one is your dura mater or tough mother. Let's see what other. Let's see if we can get rid of things. No. Oh, lovely. Here's another view, right? We were looking at this anterior, parietal. Here's your temporal lobe right here, right? Okay, but look at here. You have the cerebellum. And then when you look underneath, you have all these other things like the pons. Medulla oblongata, right? Big on cardiac. And of course, your spinal cord here. And that's all in the base of the underside of the brain. Okay. The next part, if we look at it, so those were all the brain stuff. I don't think we were able to see a pineal gland very clearly, but we got thalamus, hypothalamus, corpus callosum, all the, um, all the lobes. The next thing is we're going to go to functional anatomy and we're going to look up kinesiology. Kinesiology means logi, study of kinetics or how things move and how things move and how things work together, that's uh, functional anatomy, also known as physiology. So let's look at that momentarily. All right, we picked functional um, anatomy and that has all these animations that we were talking about. So we're gonna look at uh, the different kind of interactions and movements between the bones. You're gonna need to know your movements for your class. So of course you double click on uh, this kinesiology icon Click open and give it a minute. Okay, when you hit the kinesiology, you'll notice that the skeletal muscle is here and there's going to be um, some dots. You see these dots? They're gonna help start showing you some movements. So let's click on a dot and let's see what happens. Move this. Uh, click on a dot and when I click on the dot on the shoulder, you can see there's a whole bunch of movements and there are a set of movements here. So let's look at this one. So 
this this movement, when I click on the first one, that's shoulder abduction and adduction. Remember, abduction is moving away from midline. So when you abduct somebody, you take them away from something. So that's uh, called abduction. So we're gonna move the arm, if you press play, we're gonna move his arm away from midline and you can see what's going on here. And you can see which are the two muscles, which are some muscles that are really important here. So I click on this one, right? Well, I know that's my deltoid, let's put it back. So what muscles are we going on here? This deltoid and then my pectoralis major. So let's say for example, right? It goes, uh, my patient, uh, either hurt their pectoralis major or their deltoid or their clavicle or their scapula or their humerus, they wouldn't be able to do what? They wouldn't be able to do this. And you see the main, the protagonist or the, uh, I mean ag protagonist, the agonist or the main mover, here's the deltoid. Okay, let's look at another one. Here's another one here. Look at that one. Shoulder elevation and depression. So it looks like it's gonna do some rows. So let's see, yep. And that's, look at the red, who's the main mover? That's your trapezius or your traps. So that's why when you do front rows, uh, that's how you develop uh, no neck if you wanna be a football player, All right? Let's look at something else. Shoulder protraction and retraction. And remember, protraction means to move things forward. Retraction, re means back. So let's see what that looks like. And you could see, ooh, look, you have your serratus muscles being activated and looks like your subscapularis, I don't know what this is. Well, we'll find out, how's this? If I look behind it, what am I messing with? Well, one of your rotator cuffs, so, yeah, but definitely your serratus muscles are working here. And let's do one more. Let's do uh, here, a hip. Let's see what's going on. And this is your hip. And let's look at a uh, rotation of your hip. So I hit that button because that looks like rotation and external internal rotation. Then you could see what muscles move around. And you could see, right, the gracilis and the adductor muscles move around when you, you know, doing Michael Jackson sort of things. And this looks like your tensor fasciae latte also is moving around, okay? Now for um, uh, for the actual, like, check off for your final, of course, this you already answered. I'll ask you just about motions, like adduction versus abduction, flexion versus extension. That's pretty easy, but definitely there's going to be a mid-sagittal, uh, probably prosection, and you'll be responsible for these things. All the lobes, right? And of course, your um, uh, thalamus, hypothalamus, corpus callosum, pons, also cerebellum as well. Uh, but pineal gland, eh, it was really hard to find, hard to see, I didn't see it. So not really too much. And for muscles, all the muscles, and I'll, I'll, I'll make a list, all the muscles that were mentioned in the video. So that is essentially uh, unit three. All right, and I'll see you in lab.